Well, good evening. Welcome to our at the table service on this, the first Sunday of February here at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. It's wonderful to see you. We're glad that you're joining us, uh, whether it's live or as a recording. And we hope in this time we might connect not just with one another, but with our Lord and through the spirit and the technology that's available to us. As part of our worship tonight, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. So if you wish to participate in that, be sure you have some form of bread or juice or uh, beverage at your disposal so that you can join in that later. Um, the other thing I'll just share and I'll, is that um, I need to make sure I get the right um, reference because I want to make sure that uh, that I share this correctly. Some of our liturgy tonight is actually uh, written by Rose Schrott Taylor. Uh, through the Presbyterian Outlook, our call to worship and our um, and our uh, declaration of faith are both given are both written by her. So we're grateful for uh, the Presbyterian Outlook offering that service uh, for us and, and appreciate her her words and liturgy in this time. So let's let me put up the call to worship here and make sure I've got the right one. That's sound. Uh, yep. Okay, if you would, join me in the responsive call to worship. We are called to the work of Israel, to the work of Jesus. We are called to spread God's love in this world. We can do this work as we are because of the Holy Spirit. By God's grace, we are salt. We purify, we cleanse, we bind, we bring out the best in people. By God's grace, we are light. We allow things to be seen as they are. We point to holiness. By God's grace, we follow the commandments and the law. We love the Lord our God and our neighbors as ourselves. By God's grace, we are salt. We are light. God transform us, transforms us and uses us. Let us worship our God so full of transformative grace. And Anthony, I'll let you introduce our opening song. Great. Our opening song is an upbeat praise uh, hymn titled In the Beauty of Holiness. Wonderful. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let's give him the praise. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Give him the honor. Give him the praise.
our scripture tonight is from the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 13, which, chapter 5, verse 13 through 20. I'm going to invite Holly to read the, share our scripture tonight. Let's listen, friends, to the word of the Lord from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light in all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until it is all accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Do you ever have an experience that you would describe as God shining God's light on you at just the right moment? Maybe there's a friend who gives you a call out of the blue and the laughters and the memories you share together lift you up to a better place. Maybe you're struggling to get into your car something that you bought at the store and a kind stranger offers you a helping hand. Maybe as you're driving to work, you notice that the sky is a brilliant combination of colors and you're reminded of God's bountiful grace amid all the stresses that you've been experiencing. A few years ago, I officiated a wedding for a couple who were not members of the church that I served, but had been referred to me by a wedding coordinator who I had worked with before. And the couple's name uh, were Katie and Chris, and I had met with them several times for premarital counseling and making the plans for their wedding. And I was excited for them about the new life that they were going to be sharing together and starting together. And I really had never paid attention to their last names, nor did anything unusual register for me when Chris, who was the groom, said that he was from Canada, not from the United States. Well, the wedding, their wedding was at a venue in downtown Indianapolis, where I used to live, and the rehearsal was on the day before the wedding on Friday. And upon my arriving at the rehearsal, the wedding coordinator, as we were talking, asked me, so were you aware of who the groom's father is? And I said, no, he never said anything specific to me about his dad. Well, the groom's name was Chris Goodyear. And his father is Scott Goodyear, and he is a retired IndyCar racing race car driver and actually a former television broadcaster for ABC. And he would used to do the color commentary for the Indianapolis 500 mile race. So when I heard this, I started to get a little nervous and thought, oh, great. Now I'm doing a celebrity wedding. And Debbie and I had been invited to the rehearsal dinner that evening at one of the downtown restaurants. It's one of those restaurants where you don't go on your own, but when you're invited, you, you go as quick as you can because it's a nice dinner. So I kept thinking, well, what have I gotten myself into? But then all of my fears and all my anxieties were laid to rest. The groom, Chris, was one of the most humble and gracious and down-to-earth people I had ever met. 
And it's clear that that came from his upbringing by his parents, Scott and Leslie. They were, they were normal people. They were grateful for this time of celebration. They asked for help and directions whenever the time was right. And Scott made the special effort to speak to me and Debbie at the rehearsal dinner. He wasn't in a rush, but he genuinely showed appreciation for our being present with them that night. It was, it was really one of the most joyful weddings that I had been fortunate to be a part of. And for that moment, at that time in life, it was God's light shining down on us in a way that was unexpected and was surprising. We certainly need those rays of light shining on us, don't we? At this time of the year especially, the dreariness of winter can remind us of the dark places of our own lives and the world in which we live. We struggle with helping a family member make healthier decisions about his or her future and well-being, but that keeps being countered with the darkness of addiction and self-indulgence. We yearn for inspiration and excitement in our career or in our job, but we operate in a darkness of the mundane with coworkers or superiors who are just stuck in the grind. The darkness of winter can definitely accentuate the weariness we might be feeling in our daily walk of faith. Perhaps it's no coincidence then that the folks who put together the lectionary readings for today offer some hope and some light to shine in the darkness of the winter doldrums. In this passage from Matthew that Holly has read tonight, Jesus has just spoken the Beatitudes at the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount, and now he is speaking of salt and light and his purpose in fulfilling the law. More than anything, he is offering hope to the people of God's coming kingdom, and he's empowering all his followers to be a light amid the darkness of the world, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus begins by saying, you are the salt of the earth. And yet in our modern day world, we often hear that salt is bad and we should avoid too much salt for the sake of our own health. How can salt enrich our lives? Well, when used in appropriate amounts, salt enriches food, which otherwise would be bland, giving it an appealing taste. In the same way that salt provides flavor to food, Jesus calls us to flavor the world in which we live. And when salt loses its taste, Jesus says it is no longer good for anything and is to be thrown out. As members of the body of Christ, our great diversity of gifts and experiences provide ample opportunities to enrich the world with God's love. If, however, we become comfortable or indifferent about the flavor God has given us, and we lose our saltiness and our purpose from God. Someone once said to me, salt when added to food can bring out the best flavors. Bland Christians just blend in and rarely make a difference. Jesus follows his analogy of salt with one of light. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. This analogy is straightforward. The purpose of light is to illumine the darkness so that all might see. We don't have night lights in our rooms all covered up. That would defeat the purpose of having a light on in the first place. Light offers clarity and vision and calm in places that would usually be filled with uncertainty and blindness and fear. You are the light of the world. Jesus is speaking these words not only to the masses gathered on a hillside in Galilee, but also to his newly appointed disciples. For me, it's as if Jesus is saying to them, look, the light I'm giving you is not something that you keep just to yourself. It's something which is for the entire world. Don't forget that, because it's through your good works that God is working, and you will give glory to your Father in heaven. Or consider how Archbishop William Temple once put it, the church is the only organization on earth 
that exists for those who are not its members. How does that sit with you? It's a little unsettling, isn't it? The church can't exist without its members, can it? I mean, we have to have members to serve as leaders, to financially support the organization and its operation, to provide for fellowship and study and organize its activities. Isn't that why we exist? To keep things afloat in a secure for those who have said that Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church is their church home. Church is the only organization on earth that exists for those who are not its members. The light we are to shine before others is not a light for us to keep within the walls of the church. The light we are to shine is for all the world, especially for those who are not our members. When we focus too much on ourselves, we're hiding under a bushel basket. When we become exceedingly internally focused, then we have become bland like salt that has lost its taste. How do we keep a proper focus as individuals and as the church so that our light shines before others? A colleague once told me or shared with me something in the past that I think speaks to this topic. In his church, they say that there are some things that they do sitting in rows and that there are some things that they do sitting in circles. When you're sitting in rows, you're primarily receiving, usually passively. But when you're sitting in circles, you are often giving and receiving usually in an active way. If you are primarily experiencing faith by sitting in rows, then you might be on the verge of losing your saltiness. If you are not balancing your life of faith with experiences in circles or active interaction, then your light might not be shining as brightly as God wishes. If our first reaction when we are asked to help or to serve in a particular way is to come up with an excuse why we can't do it. Maybe we have forgotten how the light of God shined on us through someone else in the first place, and how we are called to shine that light to others. As a church, our view must be outward focused, not solely inward focused. When our decisions are guided more by how our membership will feel, rather than how it will impact our mission to the world, then we have become bland and tasteless, and we can no longer see in the darkened room. God has not called us to create an exclusive club where we will always be comfortable and secure. God has called the church into being to shine the light into the darkness, to enliven the rigid, and to do works in this world which give God the glory. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let it be so today, tomorrow, and all of our days. Amen. In response to God's word, I would invite us to declare our faith tonight using a portion of the Confession of Belhar you'll we'll see projected there in front of you. We believe that God has entrusted the church with the message of reconciliation in and through Jesus Christ, that the church is called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, that the church is called blessed because it is a peacemaker, that the church is witness both by word and by deed to the new heaven and the new earth, in which righteousness dwells, that God's life-giving word and spirit has conquered the powers of sin and death, and therefore also of irreconciliation and hatred, bitterness and enmity, that God's life-giving word and spirit will enable the church to live in a new obedience, which can open new possibilities of life for society and the world. Amen. Tonight we are 
going to come around the Lord's table in a virtual way and celebrate the meal that Jesus instituted on the night before his arrest. Um, before we do that, I would invite us to share any joys and concerns that are part of our life of faith. Um, would share with you to lift up in prayer the Shams family, who is the Afghan family that's been a part of our new neighbors, one of our new neighbors in the neighborhood around the church that we have been supporting as they transition to their new life here. They had scheduled and traveled to Arlington, Virginia on Friday for an asylum hearing, but upon arriving found out that it had been canceled. And so they are now back here in, in, in Raleigh, but um, would ask for prayers for them as they continue to navigate this, this process that's before them. Um, would ask prayers for, I would lift up the our, our students and families and teachers and administrative staff. Uh, there have been at least two code red lockdowns in schools in Wake County this past week, one involving a gun being brought on campus, another with a social media threat. I would just ask that we lift up in prayer all of these folks, our students especially, um, they shouldn't have to go to school in fear, period. And how we work together as society to help prevent that or alleviate that, I pray that God will work through all of us in ways that will, that will truly bring that to bear. Um, and I would just share the joy and the gratitude for Mac Winslow. Uh, some of you may have seen on the news this week, on the CBS Evening News, on the local news that he and one of his uh, scout leaders from our troop were recognized with uh, heroism awards by the Boy Scouts of America as they both uh, performed CPR on Ron Height, who was one of their fellow scout leaders this past summer, for 40 minutes um, and used an AED machine as Ron suffered a cardiac arrest and heart attack. And thankfully, Ron is here today because of their life-saving work. And so we celebrate them and are grateful for their acts that they did out of selflessness. Do you all have any joys or concerns that you'd like to lift up? If you do, feel free to unmute, unmute yourself and, and share that, uh, share it publicly. My, my cousin Von Seal, who uh, was in the hospital with COVID and pneumonia and other related problems um, has now been able to go back to her house. She stayed with her sister for a few days, but she's back in her house. Um, so she's doing better, Good. but is still very, very sick. Okay. And then my former roommate, Barbara, who we'd been praying for after she was in a bad car accident and had a lot of internal injuries. While all that was going on, she also had to find a new place to live. Mm -hmm. And she sent out an email today saying that this place that she has now looks like it's going to be a stable housing for her. So praise yeah. God, both That's of those. That's great. Thank you for sharing about both of them, Holly. Thank you. We will hold all of these and lift them all up to God in our prayers. Let us turn to God as we prepare for this meal that Jesus has set before us. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Lord's taper, table. Our Savior invites all who trust and believe in him to share in this feast, which he has prepared. May the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides, O Lord. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent your only begotten, in whom your fullness dwells, to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. 
revealing your love, Jesus taught those who would hear him, healed those who believed in him, and received all who sought him and lifted the burden of their sin. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Help us, O God, to love as Christ loved. Knowing our own weakness, may we stand with all who stumble. Sharing in his suffering, may we remember all who suffer. Held in his love, may we embrace all whom the world denies. Rejoicing in his forgiveness, may we forgive all who sin against us. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages, we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus was at table with his disciples. And after giving thanks, he took a loaf of bread and broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant, which is sealed in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. And as we celebrate and give thanks for this meal, I would invite us all to conclude by saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Anthony, I'll let you share our last song tonight. Our last song is a familiar uh, spiritual piece. As we proclaim, we've got joy and peace like a river. Amen. you all man that gives me that gives me energy and hope on a long, after a long day praise god amen <laughs> friends there's a lot in the world that can bring us down there's a lot of things that can be hard to see the light and to feel salty we're called nevertheless to shine that light even when it's just a tiny sliver 
And that begins to break the darkness around us and reminds us that God is always there. So I pray that in your walk of faith this week, you might be able to enliven those around you and you might be able to shine a light that reflects back and reminds us all that God is present. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, great to be with you. Hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you, Frank. Good to see Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Van Anthony. Thank you. Have a good week. Thanks, Van. Thanks, Frank. Be well. Yeah. Thanks.